Okay, today we're going to learn how to download and install the VMS software for ProView systems. Uh, to find a copy of that software, just go to backstreet-surveillance.com and select support across the top. Once that support menu drops down, select manuals and guides, and then go to the support CD main menu. Inside the ProView series folder, you'll find a link to all the software. If you have a Mac, download the Mac version. If you have a Windows, you can download the Windows version. Now that we've downloaded it, we've got a copy of the installer here. So we just want to double click on it to install the VMS. You can select where to install it at or to create an icon for it. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and launch the software. There's the icon there for it, the VMS icon. Then we'll need to set a password for the software itself. So you're creating a unique password for the VMS. As well as some security questions in case that password is forgotten. Okay, then on the login screen, go ahead and select Remember Password and Auto Login. That just means you won't have to type the password in every time you want to use the VMS software. Look at the cameras. Okay, so once we're into the software here, we want to click on the home icon in the upper left hand corner and select device management. That's where we add or remove devices like cameras or NVRs. All equipment shows what devices have been added. And since we haven't added any, this is blank. So we want to go to auto search and that's going to search our network for all the equipment here that it's compatible with. So we're going to go and select this NVR here. And then we're putting in the username and password for the NVR itself. Go back to all equipment. If you've got a green light, that means you're good. If you've got any other colored light, like red or yellow, that means there's some sort of error, usually with the password. So make sure if you get that error that you double check the password you added it in under. Uh, you've also got a P2P code right here. So if you need to, you know, quickly hook up a cell phone or another computer, you've got this code at the ready. And then once you're done, you want to go back to the home page and then to main view. Main view is where you view the cameras. So we'll open up our group here. That's the MVR that we added and we just drag it into the window. If there's no cameras here, it won't put them in the window. We've got seven cameras on the system, so not all the windows are gonna be filled up. Okay, so now that we're looking at the cameras, there are a couple functions here that we can go over. In every camera window, there's an icon for a camera. That'll take a snapshot of what this is currently showing. So if you see something live that you want to save a record of, you can hit that snapshot icon, and that'll save a screenshot of that right to your computer. When you click on that icon, uh, it'll slide up in the lower right-hand corner, and it'll let you know where that's being saved at. The next icon is for recording video. If you're seeing something live that you want to record in terms of a, a video that's maybe a few minutes long, this is how you would do that. You would click once on this and it would tell you that it's starting to record. Then you would let the clip or the event play out in its duration. And then you click on it again and it'll pop up again in the lower right telling you where it saved that video clip. Then next we've got the digital zoom. If you click on that, you can draw a box with your mouse by clicking and holding. Uh, when you click and hold, you want to drag the mouse so you create this box. The smaller the box, the more it's going to zoom in. The larger the box, the less it's going to zoom in. So if you want to retain your quality, make sure you do as large a box as possible. The last icon here is for playback. When you click this icon, it should go back 10 minutes. and start playing it back from 10 minutes ago. If you want to go back after the playback, you can just hit this little return arrow here and that'll take you back to the live view from this camera. If you have audio that you'd like to hear from a camera, you can mute the audio here or unmute the audio here. 
And then when you're viewing the cameras, you've got some options here in the lower right to change the views. You can do four at a time, you know, one at a time, all the way up to 128. When you're doing one at a time, you've also got this arrow down here that you can cycle between cameras. And then we've got full screen down here as well. So if this isn't quite full screen enough for you, you can hit this icon in the lower right, and that'll pull your whole monitor in as the screen. And if you wanna go back, you just hit the escape key on your computer. Okay, now we wanna check out the playback for something that happened, and we wanna look back a little further than 10 minutes, so this playback button isn't gonna really help us. So you wanna to go to the home page and select remote playback. And once again, you just choose your group, choose your device. Uh, we'll put a camera here, let's do camera four. And the calendar below will show recordings. If there's a day with recordings, it's gonna have the little orange flag next to it. Then the green at the bottom indicates continuous recording. The yellow bars are the motion events that have been triggered. So if we click on this bar, it'll play it from that specific time. So if you want to play it at four, you just click on the mouse where it says four. You've got all the same icons here in the camera window, snapshot, record, and zoom. You've got some additional icons below. These icons are for backing up as well as playback, so that's why you don't see them on the live view. So if we full screen this, we've got an option here to download. So this will download a specific time interval. So from midnight to two, from two to 13, uh, that's 13 minutes after midnight, 13 minutes after midnight to about half after. And this will download the whole segment in small little chunks like that. Uh, so if you can't quite find the clip, you can always download the file. But the scissors icon is probably a better option because you can choose what time. When you click on that scissors icon, you get this bracket. And all you do is you move the bracket on either side of the clip that you're trying to back up. And then once you've got that bracket set, you can hit that clip icon again, and you can save that straight to your computer. So we've also got pause, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can pause the video that way. Uh, stop, which will stop the video, and you'll have to play it again and start over. Then we've got slow, which is basically a slow motion. So when you hit that slow button in the upper right hand corner, it's going to show you're at half speed. And every time you click on it, it's going to get slower all the way down to 1 16th. So you've got quarter speed, eighth speed and 16th speed. And then to play it at normal speed, you just hit the play button again. We've also got a fast forward. And that's the same thing. Every time you click on it, it'll start at two times, four times, eight times, all the way up to 16 times speed. So if you have a large amount of video you need to watch, then that's going to be useful for you. And then we've also got a single frame. So what that does is while you're playing the video, you can pause it and you can advance the video one frame at a time. That's going to be really useful for facial detection or license plate detection where oftentimes it's only a handful of frames that get the best picture. So you can pause the video and scroll through these one at a time to find the frame that gets you the best possible clarity of what you're trying to catch. We've also got volume down here as well. Same as before, you can mute or unmute the cameras here as needed to hear the audio that's been recorded. We've also got some additional icons over here. Smart search. Smart search is used when you're recording in a AI function. Uh, for example, line crossing detection, pedestrian detection, vehicle detection, face detect, any of the, the advanced ways that the system can record. Uh, you want to use that option here to look for those. So it's not looking for either just motion or continuous. You can look at your AI recordings that way. Open all channels will start the video feed from all the cameras that have been selected. So if you have three or four cameras selected, you can hit open all channels and it'll start the playback from all those at the same time. So if we go back and select some other cameras and we can search it, 
All right, we've got colored bars on all four windows now, so we can hit open all channels and it'll start the playback from all the cameras at the same time. And then stop all channels, we'll simply close them out. Then we've got some grid change here. Uh, we recommend only doing four cameras at a time on playback. Uh, you'll likely run into processing issues and errors with the video if you try to do more than four. And then we've got a full screen option in here as well if you'd like to take a close look at any type of recording. And then down here in the lower right, we do have these plus and minus. Right? If you notice on one of these cameras, our channel one here, the, uh, the icons are not so small, right? When we get about eight o'clock, they're real tiny. So if we need to click on that icon, it can be hard to do so with the mouse when it's at its, you know, 24 hour display here. So if we hit the zoom plus, we can actually increase the size of that bar at the bottom. And then you've got these two arrows on either side to go right or left. Now we're gonna cover PTZ functions on the system here. So if you have a camera with PTZ controls, you wanna go ahead and double click on that camera to make it full screen. And then select the PTZ option up here in the upper left. This will bring you to a tour window. And what we can do here is we can set individual presets for our tour or just move the camera as needed. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna set a couple presets. Set that as preset one. So you hit the plus sign to set a preset, the trash can to delete a preset. And then the arrow is if the camera moves, we can move it back to that preset using that arrow. And then we're gonna go ahead and set this as our number two preset. And then this one is our number three preset. And then once the presets are set, you hit the play button and it will go from one preset to the next in the tour. And we have the interval right now set as three seconds when we added these presets. So you can go all the way up to 255 seconds per preset. So that means you can either have a quick tour or you can have a slow tour, you know, that stays fixed at one location for minutes at a time. Uh, and the only real recommendation we have is to put as many presets into the tour as you can. Uh, you want as much coverage as you can get. And if you're going to have a quick, you know, 10, 15 seconds per stop tour, then you're going to want more stops to make sure that, you know, the camera's not looking away while well, it should be seeing something. And then finally, we do need to make some changes to the way that this software is configured. Mainly, we want to go from the home page here into system config and then file config. Right? And what we want to do here is we want to change the file type to MP4. That means that you won't have to back up and convert all the files that you pull off the unit. They'll come pre-converted. And then we've also got a list here of where these files are going to be saved. So if you want to change where they're going to be saved, you just click on the drop down here and then specify, you know, what folder or, you know, where you want these pictures or videos being saved at. All right. And that's it for the software tutorial. If you guys have any questions, just give us a call or send us an email and we'll be happy to help you out.